So I'm going to be talking about the red pill and manosphere community as a whole in this video, not necessarily giving you why it's bad or why it is overly good. Uh, what I'm going to simply be going over is the four key steps that I see anyway from my own uh, experience with it and also what I see from how other people interact with it uh, that kind of bring people into uh, the red pill indoctrination. Uh, and then the two decisions that come up when you're within this and then lastly the three different outcomes that happen as of people just going into this and learning and so on so what i wanted to just talk about real quick just before we get into the first key area that kind of starts the walk down this path is just to talk about my thoughts on red pill and the manosphere now what i'm going to say now is that i'm not anti in any way things like bettering yourself i'm very pro just uh, i would i think overall everyone should be trying to indulge in some way in self-improvement and learn and so on become better in those different manners now where I have the issue, and I will have another video talking about this in the future, is how uh, I think a lot of younger guys get used more as uh, effectively money-making systems than they are actually trying to help the people that they are talking to. Now, this is fine when you look at certain people who, for example, don't release anything that is paid for, they have nothing that's over the top and they're not trying to pitch you something all the time. However, uh, it then ends up going into this spiral of, oh yeah, now I'm going to promote to you every single course I've ever released. Least. I'm going to promote to you every single thing that's going to apparently help you when in reality a lot of it doesn't and a lot of it isn't prefaced with things like it will require a lot of work to get there. So I'm going to talk about the first step that I would say is the first key reason why a lot of this happens and that is going to be what I would class as the prequel stage which is the first step technically but the pretty much fully out of your control step, uh, which is for a lot of guys, they grow up without someone who would be uh, their proper male role model. They don't have anyone who is like uh, directing them in life in a masculine manner, uh, which basically leads them to want to know with some answers of what's happening, uh, which is why a lot of them end up flocking to these guys who end up effectively becoming uh, their surrogate fathers online. Now I don't think a lot of these guys are bad uh, necessarily in terms of uh, some of them anyway that I will discuss later on. Now because of the lack of masculine role model in their life they end up searching for what it is to be a man in today's world which there is plenty of different takes on what that is. Uh, you've got a very uh, large contingent of people who basically believe in the idea of we need to be back in the times of war where men went off and fought at the age of 18 and so on or at least that's what they perceive as as the strong man. Then on the other side you got the feminine men who basically end up acting as two different counterbalances uh, towards really what I would say is correct in the middle. Uh, as for me anyway I would say that you've got different aspects of everywhere that you can take into account and there are some people that I'd say are closer to uh, the correct answer or at least closer to a perception of a correct answer uh, and then later on you do have some other people who are just off the rails. Now in this stage, a lot of it doesn't help that realistically when it comes to how uh, men overall are treated when it comes to the self-development community anyway. Men who try to improve themselves either do it in silence, um, so it's never really something that's talked about too much in terms of like groups of guys together, uh, but also the reason why they don't really talk about that often is because typically it is something that would get mocked by either family members, uh, friends, and pretty much anyone else who might want to say something about it. Um, and this is something that isn't uncommon. This is something that a lot of guys go through uh, when they want to get bigger at the gym uh, because they want themselves to look bigger and look better, at least how they perceive being better. Uh, if they want to improve their fitness in any way, they will end up being classed as insecure about themselves and they should just love how they look all the time, uh, which, again, there is loving yourself and then there is believing that a certain way of how you are is a good standard to be in when in reality it might not be um, and also I think a lot of people also don't realize that the gym is more of a mental game than it is the physical side of things a lot of people will go to the gym in the first place to make themselves look physically better most people stay in the gym because it helps them mentally. And like I mentioned earlier, with the idea that when guys go to the gym, uh, they're just insecure about themselves and they should get over it and just accept the way they are and be happy with the way they are. Uh, if it, that was the roles reversed, women typically don't get any form of, uh, for ex just any form of 
anti going and improving yourself mentality. It seems to be something that I would say is half cultivated by both. Um, it isn't just something that I would say is just because of women doing it to men. I would say guys do it as well. There is a lot of guys out there who, for example, think things like journaling uh, is feminine and gay, when in reality, it is proven that journaling helps men more than it does women on average, purely because men typically don't talk about their emotions that much and don't want to discuss with other people unless they've got an answer for the situation that they're in. So one of the ways of going about that is writing it down in a journal and figuring things out from there. Whereas women will typically talk to one another and basically learn off of that. There's a lot of different issues that then lead to the entry into the men's self-improvement space, which is where you then start walking down the uh, very slow path where you'll originally be looking for tips about, let's say, how you're going to dress, uh, how you're going to be keeping yourself well-groomed, or if you want to be more attractive. These different things that start off in these different phases, then you're eventually someone who could be, for example, wanting to fully indulge in self-improvement, do all these different things. They want to meditate. You want to try breath work. You want to do journaling. Uh, you want to get rid of all your social media, or you become the other side where they have some misogynistic views, for example, uh, and then they also basically believe that anyone who isn't like this, if they're a guy, is simply just incorrect and they are not a man. So it's one of these weird things where you never realize it's happening. And for example, there's a YouTuber, I've forgotten their name now. They've responded to a video and they're talking about this other person who responded to their video, basically saying how that guy is talking about how uh, effectively her channel is a walkway into right-wing indoctrination and uh, conservative views. I can understand to a degree of that argument in terms of they are effectively a gateway drug. However, I'd say that is also the roles reversed as well. The other person would be a gateway drug into left-wing ideology views, same as how uh, other people who might be a little bit more right-leaning are a gateway into into uh, right-wing and more aggressively right-wing views. It's one of those weird balances, but I don't think that either side should be basically being told that they're fully incorrect or wrong. Sure, you can believe in what's right and what's wrong. However, uh, overall, there is a balance of both that is meant to be there, and the argument that gets made of effectively the only way that we can improve is by completely getting rid of what we currently have. I don't think is the correct move. That then brings us to what I would class as the entryway into the red pill and manosphere uh, area on YouTube, on social media, for example. Now, like I said earlier, a lot of these things start because people either want to learn how to be more attractive, they want to learn about their fashion, um, they want to learn about grooming, they want to learn what should they be doing as a guy, uh, especially in, let's say, late teens entering into adulthood. Uh, they also want to learn about things like fitness, they want to learn about their own mental health and things that they could do to improve themselves as a guy uh, so that they are worth more and are more valuable to society, to the people around them, and so on. Uh, which I would say ends up falling into two different categories. You have the first instance, which is the main male self-improvement, uh, which I would class as people like Alex Costa, Alpha M, and Teaching Men's Fashion. They're pretty much like the three big three, I would say, uh, or at least from what I've seen anyway. They were the ones that when I was getting into wanting to know more about, okay, how do I improve in all these different ways? How do I do all these different things? They were the ones that I kind of started with, where I would say someone like Alpha M, for example, for as much as he gets memed for his name, obviously, um, I do think that he actually is a good, valuable person to YouTube. I think that he does actually stand as a good, like, representation of this is a guy who really seems like he is doing what he can to be a good man and try and help other people. And he's not doing it in malicious ways. A lot of the time, his videos are very engaging. They're very, like, in your face. However, they aren't trying to constantly... Like, yes, he's got sponsorships. Yes, all of these guys have sponsorships. They've all got different products that they're trying to sell. However... They aren't trying to basically tell you the only way of solving your situations is by going with this. Um, if you want to have good skincare, you have to have my skincare. They aren't doing that. They aren't doing what other people do where, for example, they basically tell you the idea that the only way to be rich is by learning through me, which is another thing that I find very off about the male self-improvement industry, and I am going to have another video, like I mentioned, talking about that. 
And then the other side of the self-improvement industry on YouTube anyway is people like Matt Diavella, Nathaniel Drew, Better Ideas, and Captain Sinbad. Captain Sinbad sits in this really middle ground area. He's openly said that he is red-pilled. Uh, for example, I listened to the first few episodes of his podcast that he did uh, before it was whatever it's called now. I stopped listening to it because, to be honest, those first two episodes, they felt way too angry. They felt way too indoctrinated into red, like red pill ideology as a whole. It was too much. It felt too much like a blaming other people and basically saying they're now going to just get rid of the idea of being with women until they're improved entirely, which I don't think is the answer either. I think it's a really odd way of looking at it and i will mention this guy later on as well like hamza um recently he's had a few more videos where because he's recently got a girlfriend you can really tell the change in tone of how he talks about women for example how he talks about relationships especially now versus six to 12 months ago he used to go on about how for example you need to be in monk mode where you don't interact with women you improve yourself until you're at a point where you can be and now he talks about how they actually do provide value to you he talks about feminine women, more in particular anyway. Overall, the reason why I class this as the entry is because a lot of these guys are trying to figure out, okay, how do I improve myself? How do I become a better person? And the biggest issue with the, uh, let's say, the walkway into self-improvement, especially for men, the answers aren't being given to you, or they're either not being given to you, or... Uh, you are unable to unravel what is being told to you. Because a lot of these YouTubers will talk to you about different subjects, but they won't go necessarily really in depth about them. They won't really tell you like, oh yeah, so if you want to really help yourself, journal, do all these different things. Try out all these different questions to yourself about, okay, am I like this? What do I want to be doing? How do I improve myself? Uh, what is it that I would be doing on a day-to-day -day basis? So you can analyze, okay, how do I make my day as best and as close as I can to my ideal day? They don't do that. They typically will do things like 30-day challenge videos, which for me, for example, I actually find great value in things like Matt Diavella's 30-day challenge videos. However, they don't go into full depth of the subject. So people will, if they're, let's say, are interested in that video, they're like, oh, cold showers they'll then go and look into cold showers more and more and more until they're really far down the rabbit hole and they're like oh yes the only way to survive as a human being is i need to go have a cold bath in the morning like everything is all over the place and personally i find that because the lack of depth in the topic they end up uh, not actually keeping people around who are let's say their actual diehard fans and this is where, like, the Red Pill community ends up having the rabid fan bases, where, like, they will basically, like, follow this person, this person will become their teacher, they'll be blinded to any outer opinion of them. And then that's where I'd say you walk into the third step of this, which I would class as window shopping. Now, the reason why I call this window shopping is because you haven't, at this point, actually found someone that you're necessarily there, like... Oh yeah, I'm now going to watch loads of their content. YouTube is recommending you loads of different things about improving yourself as a guy. And this is one of the biggest issues. As much as people want to blame the creators uh, for this, the algorithms on social media also heavily push you into this. For example, I went down a self-improvement rabbit hole uh, probably about three to four weeks ago. And literally, it has taken until very recently for my algorithm on YouTube, as in when I say very recently, I'd say like the last four or five days, for it to kind of cultivate itself back to what it is normally, where it's a balance of a load of different things that I watch. Whereas beforehand, it was literally like I'd watched like 10 Hamza videos, and now I'm getting everything uh, man help related. And that isn't a good thing, because it ends up making you basically walk down a path of you could end up watching someone who's a, a full black-pilled creator who is basically just going to tell you about how everything in the world is bad and basically existence means nothing. I'd say the reason why, like I said, it is called uh, window shopping is because, for example, for me anyway, one of my first entries into this side of it was Jordan Peterson, who I found great value in uh, from especially his 212 Rules books. I think they're actually really great reads overall, and Beyond Order is a book that I would recommend to anyone to be honest um but i'd say that he sits on one side and i'd say hamza sits on that side as well the way they act in my opinion um based off of all the videos that i've seen of them all the information that they share i would say that hamza acts like the older brother and jordan peterson acts like your surrogate father figure and then on the other side of that 
you have people like Sneeko and Andrew Tate. So you've got very different people, and I find it very odd when people try to compare both of these sides, when they're like Hamza and Sneeko, they're basically like the two like just below like the parents uh, per se. Uh, of this space. I would say even though Andrew Tate is very new to like the exposure side of things anyway, he's basically become the archetype of bit too alpha male alpha male. Um, and because of that you got people like Fresh and Fit underneath and Sneeko. They kind of all became these group of people who now all effectively worship and follow Andrew Tate into whatever field that he'll be talking about. Uh, and then on the other side you've got people who I'd say are a bit more open-minded to a degree. Obviously, I'm not saying that they're open-minded like, oh yes, we'll listen to every single different idea and come to everything and I'll listen to what you're saying and maybe I'll agree with it. I'm not saying that. When I say open-minded, I mean they're nowhere near that level of insanity in my opinion. I think people on a surface level can find value from someone like Andrew Tate as Typically, for some of the messages that he puts across, it is effectively Jordan Peterson's argument, just with the uh, half the age and the muscles. That is basically what it is, and more successful on paper when it comes to uh, money. So, they both preach the same topic, which is effectively, you are in control of your life, and you are responsible for everything. If you take that approach to life, then you have no reason to be blaming outward sources because you can now start taking the reins. Because if you basically take control and say, you know what, everything that happens to me, even if it is out of my control, is my fault in some way, or at least um, it is something that I just now have to deal with, I have to move on now, you then have now taken a level of control over the subject and you're now moving on with it. You can now start crafting your way around it. Whereas I would then say this is where you have the people below. I'd say Hamza is a lot better than Sneeko by miles. Uh, Sneeko is effectively Andrew Tate without uh, the money, without the fitness, without the knowledge, um, and overall just a immature version. I've seen plenty of videos talk about this where I do agree where... Sneeko is very much, he is what happens when someone watches too much Andrew Tate and doesn't actually start enacting all of these different things. Sneeko, for example, actually enacted a lot of what Andrew Tate says, as in really taking responsibility for everything you do and trying to uh, hold yourself accountable for everything and basically push yourself into fitness and all these different things. Like, I'm not saying that he doesn't do fitness. I think from what I've seen, he was a lot fitter um, a year ago or half a year ago. And then once he started going down this route, he got a lot more skinnier. Obviously, skinnier doesn't mean you are less fit. Uh, but overall, I think uh, roughly, obviously, I don't watch him all the time, so I don't know. Um, he effectively moved away from his fitness a bit because he was streaming all the time, constantly like networking and that sort of thing. The reason why this ends up becoming a issue like I said, it's just because of the algorithms, and I do think there is drastic differences between them. Obviously, um, I would say the biggest difference is that I would say people like Andrew Tate and Sneeko are entertainment. That is what they are. They're entertainment first. They've openly admitted this, that, for example, the reason why Sneeko is always shouting and really close to the camera is because he is entertaining his fans. And Andrew Tate has also said the same. He says, like, for example, the interview that he did um, where it's like the date show, he says that he's openly trying to antagonize her a little bit for the entertainment. It's not something that they hide. They openly admit it. They at least admit it. They don't lie about it. And then you have the other side where you've got someone like Jordan Peterson, who really, when you consider that he blew up, obviously due to uh, Canadian law, but if you now look past that part of it, you go to his actual, what he preaches a lot about when he's talking about different things like, um, you know, his lectures in school. He's literally walking around a classroom talking, thinking through his thoughts and just saying things and trying to cultivate his opinion there and then. Or he's expressing his thoughts that he's already been thinking about for ages. They aren't something, let's say, like a t one minute long YouTube short where it's really fast paced or it's just outlandish and it captivates you because of how outlandish it is. They're very different things. For the same reason that I think Hamza does really well, and from what I can see as well from his community posts, I think he's currently in this weird stage where he doesn't know necessarily how to set up his channel. He talks about, for example, how he has the fast-paced action on his main channel and then the longer-form content on his second channel, for basically the two different audiences. The main channel is for people entering into self-improvement to try and catch them in, 
and then his second channel is now to keep them and basically say you're now actually doing self-improvement so there is drastic differences there's one side that will make hour hour and a half long videos uh, where they're going into detail it isn't necessarily flashy it's not trying to captivate your attention all the time and then you've got the other side that is being really quick paced Sometimes they have long form content, let's say like podcasts, however typically they're still being very outlandish and trying to captivate people. Whereas the other side, they aren't captivating in the sense of say something that's ridiculous or start shouting, screaming and so on. They effectively keep people listening because they are talking as if they are talking to a person, they aren't talking to a crowd of people. They act as if they're actually here to help. And there's arguments to be made, obviously, some people will say people like Jordan Peterson and Hamza are worse for the community, but overall I would say they aren't. I would say typically, overall, Jordan Peterson and Hamza does more and better things for men when it comes to improving than most people on YouTube and most people really ever, especially in the modern world. There isn't really many people that I would say come close to it in terms of actually trying to get on the ground floor level of Okay, improve your life through the simple things, make your bed in the morning, do these different, like, the basics, because what people don't seem to think when they're like, oh yeah, do your bed in the morning, that's a really basic thing, that's because most guys don't do it, that's why it's such a basic thing that has to be spoken about, it's not because he's trying to basically go, make your bed in the morning, it's now it's metaphor for all these different things, no, that is because by doing that, you're now doing one action that you weren't doing before, you are now trying to take grip of your life and actually change it in your way instead of doing what you already do where you just laser like lazily sit around the house and do nothing so that is where i would say it kind of starts to go off the rails and a mixture of this i'm going to go into the fourth topic now um which basically ends up with the biggest issue uh where youtube basically cultivate your recommended feed and push you around the spectrum of the different creators but just before we go into the fourth stage this is where you effectively take on the first decision. The fourth stage is choosing your teacher, as I would call it. I would say, for example, for myself, a lot of my original self-improvement, um, really like getting into it and really trying to improve myself, uh, was during 2020, obviously during all the phases of things like the lockdowns in the UK, the lockdowns around the world, that sort of thing. And I ended up listening and watching and reading loads of stuff around Jordan Peterson and improving my life overall. I felt great. And it wasn't because I was listening to someone say something and I wanted to hear it. It's because I was actually enacting what it is. And I will talk about that later. That is another big issue within this space. But the reason why I now say this is the first decision is because this will take you down two different paths. Like I said, you've got the Andrew Tate and Sneeko, and then on the other side, you've got the Jordan Peterson Hamza-esque sides of it. I'd say those are the two main sides. Obviously, you have some people in between. However, if you were to look at it in the better for men's like improvement and the lot worse for men's improvement, or at least I would say doesn't give as much value. Not necessarily worse advice overall. That's not me saying that everything they say is like amazing and gospel i'm simply saying that they do provide value but they do not provide as much value anywhere near the same level as one other side now this first choice does very much enact consequence because if you do not get yourself out as quickly as possible you could end up becoming someone who is effectively um a alpha male in the brain but an absolute beta in life <laughs> that's the best way of putting it because uh, for a lot of people uh, who watch for example fresh and fit uh, they watch sneeko they watch uh, andrew tate a lot of these people are guys who are not alpha in their life they are just basic guys who have no ambition they do nothing they watch hour and hour long podcasts they don't actually enact anything they're learning or being taught uh, one of the key arguments that gets used against this that they will talk about is we're talking to the 1% of men. Um, no, you're not. You're talking to everyone. You change what you want to talk about. You basically end up saying this is what's good for all men. And then you say, oh, no, well, I'm only talking to 1%, the 1%. No, you are trying to talk to every single guy. But the moment that you start getting pushed on an argument of, let's say, uh, when you're talking about these money making tactics and when you're talking about all these different things of uh, when you're talking about fitness and that sort of thing, like, no, it's not the 1% of guys who do fitness. Sure, probably, if you were to look at it, not anywhere near, like, 
I would say if you were to take 100 guys, you're probably going to find about five uh, or so or six or so who actively go to the gym. And then you'll probably find about another 30 or so who try to go to the gym and then the rest just don't. They have dreams of doing it. So I'm not saying that you're not talking to a minority of men. I'm simply saying when people use the argument of, well, I'm just talking to the 1%. You're not talking to the 1%, you're talking to a load of people who are not taking action in their life and the reason why they are avidly watching your content is because they're not improving. They're doing nothing, they're not improving. Now, the reason why I state this is because someone like Hamza, for example, openly talks about this on a multitude of occasions. He talks about how uh, he does not want you to watch your, his content forever. He openly says this. He would rather you just stop using social media. Obviously, um, you could take it as, well, he's just trying to manipulate you into all these different things and so on and so on. You can believe that if you want. From what I can gather from all the content that I've seen of his, it is the case of he would rather you take what he's saying, learn from it, now go enact it and try and live your life. As that's a better off answer to helping men than saying, Hey, come watch my podcast where I'm now going to argue with women uh, for three hours straight. Because Fresh and Fit is entertaining. Again, they are the entertaining side. They are not the actual help uh, for men's self-help. They are well into the manosphere as a whole. But they are nowhere near the value level and helpfulness of people like Hamza or people like jordan peterson now one person that i actually do want to quickly mention um is chris williamson i think that's his name let me just double check yeah chris williamson uh he has a podcast called uh modern wisdom which is a really good podcast i think overall like he's a very great um middle ground i would say typically he's actually uh someone who he doesn't class himself from what i think i remember a podcast of him talking about he doesn't class himself as within the manosphere but he's within men's self-help and he's in that more like category of helping guys to a degree however he has on interesting guests and so on if you want to like move away necessarily from let's say um as if let's say you feel stuck for example i'd say listen to someone like that who's gonna be bringing on other people and talk about other things um purely because i'm only saying this as a i think he's a good middle ground in terms of he's an entryway into red pill ideology however he isn't a red pill advocate he doesn't believe in all of it i just wanted to mention him purely because i think when people think of red pill ideology they also think of the manosphere they automatically think of like the big names who are like overly like over the top for example the andrew tates the sneakos the fresh and fits um and then on the other side you have people who despise jordan peterson when a lot of his work almost all of it is directed towards improving of men i don't follow a lot of his work what he does currently uh, that's purely because again i'm trying to enact a lot of what i remember from his uh, lessons and what i remember from his books but that is where it comes into it when i say lessons obviously i mean like his actual lectures and that sort of thing but choosing your teacher is the next step and this is the final step until you now have the last decision to make this step really is like i said it's a very big one you have two sides you have andrew tate you have sneeko you also then have uh, hamza and jordan peterson two very different sides you're gonna have very different varying opinions however i'd say hamza is if you were to have a scale across here you'd have jordan peterson here you'd then have hamza then you'd have andrew tate i'd then say you'd have sneeko all the way over here because I, I, I don't understand what happened with Sneeko. It makes no sense. For someone who's been, like, who really is just Andrew Tate's child, he feels like he's more off the rails than Andrew Tate. That's just me. Um, I think Hamza is this middle ground. He is, like I said, he's the older brother, but he's not the father figure. He's not the one who has the wisdom of age, but he has the wisdom of being slightly older. Here's something that I actually really like the saying of, which is, if you're, for example, going to create content create content for your past self and i think that's actually a really good idea and i think for especially for like self-development anyway that's a great idea i think if you wanted to start a self-development channel literally just use that as your slogan and you will just be able to do things with it because if you start only doing things that you know how to do and you've learned over time 
yes, you might get bored of talking about the same topics over and over again, but that will one, inspire you to uh, bring you to learn other things, but also it means that you're actually teaching people. You know it is valuable advice because it has worked for yourself. Now, when it comes to choosing your teacher, uh, for example, like I said, uh, personally, I would say the better side is the Hamzas, the Jordan Petersons, that sort of thing. Um, and I would say... The consequence, and the reason why I say this is a consequence, is because the biggest issue in the self-improvement space, you'll see YouTubers make the videos about it all the time, which is the pro uh, the toxic side of self-improvement. And I'd say this is entirely true as well for the Red Pill community, uh, and as well as that, the Manosphere, um, which is effectively just listening and just never enacting. And the reason why I think this is a big issue is because... You'll have a lot of guys out there who will listen to things like the uh, TikTok Andrew Tate clips and then take what he's saying as if, like, it is levels of truth. When he openly says that he doesn't like the fact that clips of him get used and taken out of proportion. Obviously, again, take that with a grain of salt because it helped massively explode him. Of course, he loves the shorts, but he also talks about how really he thinks there's more value in his long-form content, which I think a lot of these creators would say. The biggest issue is that a lot of the people watching this content are going to be young guys who are either uh, one of two things. They're either too young to be able to really start doing a lot of stuff. Like, you could argue, yeah, you, you can't be too young to start improving. You can be. For example, if you are 15 in the UK, you're a guy. Uh, yes, you can take some things into control, but you can't take all things into control. Uh, you can't always control what your parents are going to cook you for dinner. You can't uh, drive to wherever you want to go. If the gym is too far away or the equipment is too expensive, your parents aren't just going to buy it all for you. Yes, you can do bodyweight workouts at home, but then again, this is more resistance. There are a lot of pe these people just basically go, nope, resistance, stupid. Just could do it. Like, yes, just do it is good advice. However, you're now having to hope that your brain is going to be able to override your switch of, let's just sit in bed for a bit. Now, the other person that watches the content and doesn't improve from it ends up being people who are, let's say, uh, five foot five, weigh 90 kilograms, eat chocolate and lay in their bed all day, and then they sit there typing away, where's your Bugatti, um, to every single person who disagrees with Andrew Tate. That is the other end of the types of people who just don't enact any of it. As that's really the biggest issue overall is the lack of actually taking responsibility and actually taking in what they have heard from these creators. Instead, they just listen to the provocative side of it and don't enact it, which is where I would say the dark side of the Red Pill and Manosphere community comes into play. Now, what I'll quickly do just before I go down to the three outcomes of all of this is talk about... Uh, what I would say is my overall opinion of, like, if you are a guy watching this who wants to improve, the best, like, starting blocks of this if you don't already do any of them. Uh, if you want to learn more about this, I have another channel, uh, my Adam Frost channel, which is my self-development channel, um, where I'll be uploading just throughout the whole year, next year as well, and so on into the future. But overall, uh, what I'm going to talk about is, I would say, the pivotal blocks, at least for me, uh, which is reading i don't always do it however i find value in reading purely because i'm not fast at reading and also i find myself uh, able to think better when i do actively read and also retain what i'm reading uh, more often for example when i'm recording these videos i have to read scripts when i read more i'm learning and that sort of thing my brain is getting used to taking in the information and trying to remember what it was so that when i go back to the book or when i'm trying to think about oh what did i just read it is already there. But also, obviously, reading has great value. You have plenty of books out there. For example, if I was to recommend any, I'd say Beyond Order. I'd say Green Lights by Matthew McConaughey is actually a really good book if you want to read something that's an autobiography slash self-development book. Uh, it sits in a great in-between zone. I think it's written very nicely for a lot of people to read. Uh, and then I'd say something, let's say, if you want to read something that's a bit more red pilly, a little bit more um, men's, very much men's help, and has some opinions that are um, very interesting to say the least uh then i'd say read hard times create strong men by stefan arnio 
Now, the next section uh, I'd say is journaling for me. I find great value in it. I'd watch someone like uh, Hamza's full guide to uh, self-improvement. I think that's the video it was. And he'll go through a few different questions. If you don't want to watch the full thing, I do also have a video talking about journaling where I mention some of the questions that's asked within that journaling segment in his video. Um, so if you want to go check that out, make sure to go do so. It'll give you a good entry into learning about yourself and figuring out okay, where do I want to be? How do I set myself goals? Because that was one of my biggest issues was a lack of goal setting, a lack of, I had the ambition there that I wanted to be something and do something more of my life. However, I didn't know what direction I was going down. I was just kind of looking around, expecting all these different answers when in reality, nothing was clicking. Um, so again, journaling, another really big one. If you have a stigma around journaling, try it and actually try and work out in your head of what you're thinking. It'll work out a lot better than you trying to think through all your issues all the time and never talking to someone about it. At least you're not talking to someone. If you don't want to talk to someone about it, you're at least writing it down and trying to figure it out to a degree in the less chaotic form of writing versus your brain thinking about everything. Now, you've also got physical health. Obviously, that's a very big one, which will uh, basically be go to the gym or do some form of exercise. Now, this is not for being physically fitter so that you can attract more people. That is not the reason why I'm saying go to the gym. I'm saying it because of two things. One, yes, you get healthier. That's a great bonus. You become a healthier human being. The actual main one is that you are doing something that is actively hard for yourself to do and it improves your ability to actually get stuff done. For example, for myself, I went through a bit of a slump, uh, I'd say probably last month, and I was struggling to get anything done. I then was forcing myself, okay, just go to the gym. I then started going with my sister, which basically meant that I had someone that I had to be accountable with, where we both were going together. So if one of us didn't go and the other one did, it'd feel a bit off. Sometimes there was days like that. However, m almost all the time, I'd say 98% of the times that we've gone in the last month has been the case that we go at the same time. Therefore, we're now both doing something that's actively harder and it makes the other harder tasks in our life. For example, for me, uh, sitting down and editing, sitting down and recording a video, sitting down and scripting. It makes these things easier to do and not as unbearable. Uh, not saying that I don't enjoy doing these. I love doing these different things. However, you always have moments where you're there like, I don't want to do this. So those are the first three key things. I'm again, like I said, go check out the self-development channel that will actually go into depth of all of this properly. Um, however, I will be talking about a four pillar step to life and all these different things. So yeah, make sure to go check that out. The three different outcomes, I would say, uh, what you've got here, and I'll just read them out from what I've got on the script. You either become fully indoctrinated into red pill ideology. Uh, you either then become fully indoctrinated into black pill ideology, or you become a better man. Those are your three outcomes. And the reason why I say the, the three outcomes is based off of what I have seen over the time of me being involved into self-development as a guy. And the first one, the full indoctrination into the red pill ideology. Again, I don't think red pill ideology inherently is bad. I think the full indoctrination where you only think in those manners is bad. As there is a lot of things that come into the darker depths of that ideology that are bad and just aren't good for you. They also don't give you good worldviews. They basically end up making you think that everyone is effectively just uh, either needing to improve themselves all the time. Again, like I said earlier, I think everyone should improve themselves, but I don't think that everyone is going to be. So I don't take that for granted. Again, it's not necessarily an awful thing. However, for you to grow as a person, you can't stay stagnant in this same ideology, same belief system. If you are 20 and then by the time you hit 50, you still have the same thoughts. You've not grown as a person. You've simply stayed in the same trap and the same loop. Then you have uh, the full black pill uh, indoctrination. Uh, that's what I would say you would end up in if you, again, end up like the people that I said earlier, the 90 kilogram, five foot five guys eating chocolate in their bed saying, what color is your Lamborghini? Not Lamborghini. What color is your Bugatti? Those are the people who eventually become blackpilled because they have listened to all of this knowledge. They have not enacted any of it. And then they sit and think to themselves, why is my life not improved? I've been listening to Andrew Tate for the last year. I've been listening to Hamza for the last year. I've been listening to Jordan Peterson videos for the last year. Why has none of it clicked? And why has none of it made me do these different things? It's clearly because the world is bad. There's no point of living. And that realistically, I'm just this useless human being who clearly can't do anything with his life. That is the end goal of one of these outcomes is 
you just become very cynical about life, you basically start believing that everything is awful and you become a massive nihilist. So that is the second outcome, and I would say if anything that's worse than uh, becoming fully indoctrinated into the red pill community. At least with the red pill community, um, some of them have decent amounts of ambition to them and they want to improve, whereas the black pill side of things, they never seem like they care. Obviously, if you're a black pillar or you're massively nihilistic, you're going to disagree with me here. But overall, I don't think that ideology helps or serves you in any way that is actually going to help you pro be productive in life and improve in yourself and improve your state of mind of how you can be. Now, lastly, becoming a better man. This is something that obviously is debated. People will say, oh no, any form of red pill ideology is bad. All these different things. That's not the case. In my opinion, I think all guys should go through a red pill stage. All guys should go through a self-development journey. And all guys should stay on a self-development journey. That That's what I think anyway. Because for myself, when I'm actively trying to improve myself in different ways, improving myself does not mean constantly pushing myself to the limits. But it is keeping in my life the things that helped me get out of depression. That helped me get out of massive slumps. Those things are always based around self-improvement. It's always fitness, it's always reading, it's always journaling, it's always trying to just go outside and just not think about other things all the time that are either technology-based or work-based all the time. Those things are, in at a core level, within self-improvement. That's why I think that everyone should always try to keep parts of self-improvement in their life. However, you need to dip your toes into the Red Pill community and not stay stuck in them forever. Now, like I said earlier, I do have another channel called Adam Frost where I am doing my self-improvement journey over there. I'll upload one longer video every single month talking about my self-improvement journey. Not necessarily longer, like hours long, half an hour long. It might be like 20 minutes, half an hour, that sort of thing. However, uh, the premise of that channel is going to be me talking and giving you advice from what I've tried, what I'm trying, uh, and also giving you opinions based off of, like I said, what has worked for me. But yeah, if you guys did enjoy this video, make sure to leave a like and do subscribe. I hope this gives more thoughts into how the Red Pill community works and why people fall into this trap of effectively becoming one of those last two outcomes, which is, um, you know, becoming a fully red pilled person or becoming a black pill person. Those are the two last outcomes uh, that are the worst options, in my opinion. Becoming a better man is obviously the best option. But I think the prequel stage, the entry stage, the window shopping stage, and the choosing your teacher stage all come with big risks. However, all of them are necessary for you to grow and become better. So yeah, with that all being said, make sure to leave a like, do subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. This is the only video essay around this topic that I will be uploading on this channel, as this channel is going to be coming gaming only by the end of the year. Uh, so don't worry, this is a one-off long-form video about a different subject. I will eventually probably re-upload this to the other channel, um, just because might as well um but yeah overall if you guys did enjoy make sure to leave a like and if you disagree with me about different points you can always let me know in the comment section down below and yeah with that being said i'll see you guys in the next one have a good one